It's been a while since I've done an Abraxa vlog from inside my house. And it's also been a while since I've had someone in the comment section ask me, when am I going to upload stuff from the present day? Uh, but that just happened again. <laughs> I have had some planes arrive in the mail and it's been a while. Um, I have to admit, I've slowed down on the whole collecting thing and as I think I mentioned in the past, I only collect the planes now that I fly on or if they're part of the Australian main airline fleets. So, uh, in uh, what I have here are four aeroplanes now that are joining my collection and uh, three of them I've flown on. So that's pretty cool. Um, so just bear with me and uh, we'll take a look. The first one um, I haven't flown on yet, but is going. it'll be highly likely if I take a domestic flight in the next few years um, that I will. And that's why I like to get them early if I can, just to avoid the price hikes later on. So it's from Gemini Jets, and it's a Qantas 737 in the new livery. Um, so you can see it's got the silver band on it, it's got the new writing and all that. Um, so yeah, from Gemini Jets, this is a recent release and I thought, well, I might as well get my hands on it now uh, because, um, yeah, I know, I've seen how Qantas 737s have gone uh, in the past and they, they, start, they skyrocket once they're out of, out of print. This one is uh, VXM, so I think that was one of the first ones that got the new paint job, um, so there we go. Um, I'll open these later. Next up, uh, still from Qantas, um, and one, well, what an interesting box, uh, and one that I've recently flown on is um, the 787, you can't tell, it's the, it's the Qantas Opera House. <laughs> it's uh, their first 787ZNA, uh, which is the aircraft I flew on back in November, whilst it was doing familiarization flights on the domestic network. Uh, so yeah, Qantas' is first 787 uh, is in this box. Yeah, you couldn't tell that from the box art, but anyway. Next up was one that was quite hard to track down, uh, but I'm happy to have it, even though it did cost a, a small fortune to acquire, and it's been, because it's been out of print for so long. And what hurts is I had this in my collection at one point, and when I was doing my clear out, I'm, I would have sold it. And I probably sold it way under what it would have been worth. Anyway, so I flew on this one back in June during our Europe trip. And it's a British Airways Boeing 767-300. Ah, I like, we have the flap again. No, oh, the 737 had it too. Anyway, we'll look at these later. Um, yeah, so that's the Rolls-Royce powered 767. And these are worth a bomb if you can find them in the Union flag livery. Uh, you can find them in all the other colours, but the, the this one, that's the one. That's the one. I just, yeah, I could not find one at a reasonable price, so I found one at a less than ridiculous price. <laughs> anyway, good to have it back in the collection as I have flown on one. Um, it's from a different Rego set, but I mean that's getting really picky. Um, anyway, yes. All right, and so the last one of this, these four um, is another rare one, pretty hard to find, I think, certainly on eBay. Um, and uh, I, was, I think I got lucky um, because, again, this one was, is, I think, one of those that usually goes for quite a lot of money, um, and I picked it up for fairly cheap. Um, and it is, uh, I flew on this one also in June as part of the Europe trip, and uh, it's the Air Berlin Airbus A320. Um, now, obviously, Air Berlin have gone um, belly up. Uh, they are no more. So I think having this um, this model probably is worth, um, you know, it, it, it's, it's good. One, I've flown on one of these, and the airline isn't around anymore. So um, that's a nice addition. Uh, this one is um, D-A-B-D-Q. Uh, we flew on A-B-N-N, I think. So, you know, you're not always going to get the registration that you flew on. Um, but, uh, you know, it's good to have, you have a representation here. So I'll get these out of their boxes and we'll have a look. Um, they're all one 400 scale, so they're not going to be massive, especially, uh, you know, most of these are smaller jets. Um, but I think, uh, I think they'll be pretty cool. And one day 
I'll have somewhere I can display them all and remember I flew on that one and flew on that one. And... All right, so there we go. There's the four of them. Um, I don't think I mentioned in all of it. So the Qantas 737 and the British Airways 767 are both from Gemini jets. The British Airways one is considerably older. And the two on the right, the Qantas 787 and the Air Berlin A320 are from Phoenix. Both are very good die-cast manufacturers, I have to say. Um, quality of their molds is very, it's pretty spot on. Um, I would say Phoenix probably drops a little bit sometimes in their quality control of their, uh, sometimes how they apply the livery. Um, I've had a, there's one, there was a, there was a famous one a few years back, they released a Corner 767 and they misspelled Australian on the side uh, of the, when it says the Australian airline and their recent release of an A330 also they misprinted the registration on the lower wing so there's a few little niggles like that um, but they're all fairly good and detailed models I mean there's not really much to complain about uh, the, the, just the level of detail continues to improve um, you know they now have the little antennas and stuff on the top of them um, and the Wi-Fi bumps and things like that they all get included now um, the quality of printing is amazing. Um, let's have a quick look at the 737 here. That even, even on the bottom, we get the Qantas uh, logos now printed there. Um, this is such a small model; it's so hard to see the details. But the white kangaroos on the in, inner winglets and things like that. Uh, whereas you compare it to the uh, British Airways 767, we don't have any of the antennas um, on the on the fuselage much simpler model um, the A320 is a another good one airberlin.com written across the bottom got little aerials on the roof and uh, the Dreamliner this is a good one Again, we have the antennas on the top, we have something on the bottom. Um, and one thing I noticed when I opened it is that the Spirit of Australia typeface on the roof there doesn't line up from the left to the right side. And I thought this might have been a, printer, a printing error, but when I had a look at a photo that was top down, that is actually how it is. So they've actually paid attention to detail there for sure. Um, yeah, so very cool. So that was pretty cool. Um, yeah, like I said, it's nice to have these in the collection. And when you have a collection of aircraft that you've flown on, I think it you have more of a story that you can tell uh, when you're looking at them or when people are looking at them. So um, yeah, like, like I said, I'd love to be able to have them on display at some point, maybe when I'm older and, and gray. Uh, now I have one more aircraft model in the mail. Uh, it should be arriving very soon, so that'll be in a vlog for later for for down the track um, it's also another special one and obviously it is one that I've flown on it's in 200 scale so it's a bit bigger um, but yeah I'm pretty excited to have it because it is the exact registration that I flew on so um, with the 200 scales I do try and do that if they release one that I've flown on and it was a special flight I'll definitely think about but more than likely end up getting it so um, yeah looking forward to that uh, thanks for sticking around in this one I know it was a bit more uh, talking uh, uh but you know these will make up some of the vlog some of the time i can't always be out on location the next vlog will be out on location it's filmed already uh and uh, i'll load that one up into the queue um just bear with me i know that my uh better more understanding supporters probably aren't too bothered that my videos are older um but i'm doing what i can guys there's some really cool stuff for 2017 that's coming. I'm really excited. There's so there's just yeah there's some we had some really uh, cool uh, movements through Sydney, especially early 2017. So that you're not going to have to wait too long to see some of the really cool stuff. Uh, and of course, I went to Europe, so there'll be some cool stuff there as well. And then of course, we'll get to 2018 eventually. Hopefully, it won't be 2019 by then. <laughs> Anyway, I really appreciate all your support. 
and the comments, even the ones um, where I get that number one question. Um, I just try and explain it each time. And if if you like it, then hang around. If not, there's many other aviation channels out there nowadays, guys. So um, comment below. If you've got some diecast models and you collect, what's your collection like? Um, yeah, open up a channel. And uh, don't forget to tell your friends. If you've got Av Geeks, Av Geek friends, get them on board. Get them on a Praxis video. Um, yeah. Anyways, thanks for watching. I will see you in the next one. Cheers.